Hi everyone and welcome back to our newest episode of Mastering Manufacturing in our second video of the mini-series about tolerances. So in the first episode, as we mentioned earlier, we went over tolerances, what makes a tolerance in CNC machining, and in this video we will be going a bit more in-depth into the several issues that engineers or designers may encounter when dealing with tolerances. So one of the first issues we often encounter uh, in our industry is design for assembly. and Basically, I can put this as I want this part to fit with this one and it's not fitting or I would like it to fit. How should I tolerance it? So let's say we have a customer who wants to design two parts that go together. The first part must assemble with the second one, male feature with a female feature, and then the part is standard tolerance, 2768 fine. And then unfortunately, the male feature has exactly the same nominal diameter as the female feature. Uh, what's going to happen in most cases if the two parts are at 25 millimeters diameter, for instance, they're just not going to fit most times. We can show you actually now on the paper that if you see that the first part has the exact same diameter as the second one, even with the margin of general tolerance, the two parts probably won't fit unless you have some margin of error. In that case, the diameter of part one will be smaller than the diameter of part two. And in that case, you will be sure that they fit. The second one that we sometimes see is when people have, let's say, assembly requirements, let's say they make an electronics casing and they just want to make sure they will be able to fit, let's say, the PCB in, inside of the aluminum case that they just manufactured. And sometimes what we see is just the customer coming to us and say, hey, can we just make the overall part at a tolerance of plus minus 0.02 millimeter? That is oftentimes an absolute nightmare for engineers or manufacturers to deal with because when you have a part with overall tolerances of 0.02 millimeter, which is very tight, then all the features on the part will have to be made at that tolerance. And the fact that the tolerances are so tight will either will make it a nightmare, most likely for the machinist who will have to make the part, but also for the person paying for the part. So let's take again the example of this nano satellite panel. If what actually matters to you in the way this part will be assembled or the way this part will function, if what actually matters to you is the distance between this plane and that plane, then you should tolerance that and that only. Over tolerancing and saying the whole part should be made at plus minus 0.02 will actually not bring you anything more than just tolerancing what you actually need to be at a tight tolerance. The third one that we often see is, let's say, someone coming to us and saying, oh, okay, I would like this part to be cosmetic, but I also have assembly requirements and I have those tight tolerances that I'm sure will make my assembly work just fine. Um, let's take this part and to show you a little bit what an example of conflict may be between a surface finish requirement and a tolerance requirement. Let's say this part has been made with uh, an anodizing type 3 finish and the customer needs a really tight tolerance on the contour here in order to be assembled this part with another, another part. And even though there's an assumption generally in the industry that the tolerances will be identical before the anodizing and after the anodizing in the case of especially type 3 anodizing, the tolerances may be impacted for very tight tolerances. And that may be a problem, let's say, for this feature if tolerances are really important to you. More generally speaking, if you have on the same physical part surface finish requirements and tight tolerances requirements, it's probably better to think about masking off the areas where you know you will have tight tolerances so that these tight tolerances are not impacted in any way, shape or form by the surface finish operation and or just a function of the work done by the machinist. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy the content. Subscribe to the channel and you will be notified of every video that uh, comes out. And of course, let us know if you would like to hear more on the topic or any other topic that we already talked about in the previous videos.